It was breakfast time on Friday morning. They had a full hour of study time between breakfast and the start of potions. Harry Potter! Harry looked over his shoulder and found himself beholding Ernie McMillian. Be careful of the potions master in our session today. The older Hufflepuffs told us that Professor Snape can be really nasty to people he doesn't like. And he doesn't like most people who aren't Slytherins. Just keep your head down and don't give him any reason to notice you. Thanks. You might have just saved me a lot of trouble. Ernie nodded and turned to go back to the Hufflepuff table. Harry? Yes, I'll try not to draw Professor Snape's attention. Oh, that's hopeless. Completely hopeless. So we had the house elves bake you a cake. We're going to put one candle on it for every point you lose for Ravenclaw. And have a party for you at the Gryffindor table during lunch. We hope that'll cheer you up afterward. I wasn't going to ask this after Professor Binns. I really wasn't. But if Professor Snape is that awful, why hasn't he been fired? It's what you do to bad teachers. You fire them. Then you hire a better teacher instead. You don't have unions or tenure here, right? Fred and George were frowning in much the same way that hunter-gatherer tribal elders might frown if you tried to tell them about calculus. See you at lunch, guys, and don't blame me if there aren't any candles on that cake. Fred and George both laughed as if Harry had said something funny and then headed back toward Gryffindor. Excuse me, came a worried voice from behind him. I swear, this place is almost eight and a half percent as bad as what Dad says about Oxford. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even stop or death, if you aren't as great a pack of fools as I usually have to teach. His eyes suddenly jumped to where Harry was sitting. Ah yes, Harry Potter, our new celebrity. Clearly this man already didn't like him for whatever reason. And when Harry thought about it, better by far that this potions professor should pick on him rather than, say, Neville or Hermione. Harry was a lot better able to defend himself. Potter. What would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? Was that in Magical Drafts and Potions? I just finished reading it, and I don't remember anything which used wormwood. Tut tut. Fame clearly isn't everything. Really? But you just told us you'd teach us how to bottle fame. Say, how does that work, exactly? You drink it and turn into a celebrity? Let's try again. Where would you look if I told you to find me a bezoar? That's not in the textbook either, but in one muggle book I read that a trichinobizor is a mass of solidified hair found in a human stomach, and muggles used to believe it would cure any poison. Wrong. A bezoar is found in the stomach of a goat. It is not made of hair, and it will cure most poisons, but not all. I didn't say it would. I said that was what I read in one muggle book. No one here is interested in your pathetic muggle books. Final try. What is the difference, Potter, between monk's blood and wolf's bane? You know, in one of my fascinating muggle books, they described a study in which people managed to make themselves look very smart by asking questions about random facts that only they knew. So, Professor, can you tell me how many electrons are in the outermost orbital of a carbon atom? Four. It is a useless fact, which no one should bother writing down, however. And that will be... five points? No, let us make it an even ten points from Ravenclaw for back chat. Professor Severus Snape, I know of nothing which I have done to earn your enmity. If there is some problem you have with me which I do not know about, I suggest we... Shut up, Potter. Ten more points from Ravenclaw. The rest of you, open your books to page three, so you will not be as ignorant as him. All his blood seemed to have been drained away and replaced with liquid nitrogen. He knew he'd been trying to keep his temper, but he couldn't seem to remember why. Harry, stop, please, it's alright, we won't count it. Talking in class, Granger? Three. So, how does one go about filing a formal complaint against an abusive professor? Would you care to explain how it works? Detention for one month, Potter. I decline to recognize your authority as a teacher, and I will not serve any detention you give. Then you will be... His voice stopped short. Expelled, were you about to say? But then you seem to doubt your ability to carry out the threat, or fear the consequences if you did. I, on the other hand, neither doubt nor fear the prospect of finding a school with less abusive professors. You seem oddly reluctant to look me in the eyes, Potter. A shock of sudden understanding. 
So it was you the Sorting Hat was warning me about. What? Sit down, Potter. I think I'll take my leave of this class, and hire a tutor to teach me potions while I'm here. If any of you decide that you don't care to be bullied by this man, my sessions will be open to you. Harry strode across the room and grasped the doorknob. It didn't turn. You are making me feel threatened. And that is a mistake. You're insane, Potter. Harry walked over to the wall and with one smooth motion yanked open a closet door. There was the muffled sound of someone snapping his fingers and then nothing. Some of the anger drained away and he realized what he'd just done. What he'd just done. He'd antagonized a teacher three orders of magnitude beyond anything he'd ever managed before. He'd lost all the points Ravenclaw had and then he'd used the time turner. His imagination showed him his parents yelling at him after he was expelled. Professor McGonagall disappointed in him and it was just too painful and he couldn't bear it and he couldn't think of any way to save himself. The thought that Harry allowed himself to think was that if getting angry had gotten him into all this trouble, then maybe when he was angry he'd think of a way out. Things seemed clearer somehow when he was angry. And the thought that Harry didn't let himself think was that he just couldn't face this future if he wasn't angry. So he cast his thoughts back and remembered the burning humiliation. Tut tut. Fame clearly isn't everything. Ten points from Ravenclaw for back chat. The calming cold washed back through his veins like a wave reflected and returning from some breaker, and Harry let out his breath. Okay. Back to being sane now. One hour earlier, he very carefully and slowly cracked open the closet door and peeked out. No one seemed to be in the classroom. He was actually feeling a bit disappointed in his non-angry self for collapsing like that and wanting only to get out of trouble. Professor Severus Snape was everyone's problem. Normal Harry had forgotten that and wished for a way to protect himself. And let all the other victims go hang? So this is my dark side, is it? Bit of a prejudiced term, that. My light side seems more selfish and cowardly, not to mention confused and panicky. So, Harry, I've heard one report of this day from Professor Snape. Would you care to tell me what happened in your own words? It's not complicated. He tried bullying me the way he's been bullying every non-Slytherin in the school since the day Lucius foisted him off on you. As for the other details, I request a private conversation with you concerning them. A student who is reporting abusive behavior from a professor can hardly be expected to speak frankly in front of that same professor, after all. Mr. Potter, Professor Severus Snape has my fullest confidence and serves Hogwarts at my own behest, not Lucius Malfoy's. This meeting is not about Professor Snape. The purpose of this meeting is to discuss how to discipline you for the events of this morning. This man has terrorized your school for years. I spoke to students and collected stories to make sure there would be enough for a newspaper campaign to rally the parents against him. Some of the students cried when they told me. I almost cried when I heard them. You allowed this abuser to run free? You did this to your students? Professor Snape has suggested, and I have agreed, that three full months of detention will be appropriate. Declined. This is not a request, Mr. Potter. This is your punishment! You will explain to me why you allowed this man to hurt the children placed in your care. And if your explanation is not sufficient, then I will begin my newspaper campaign with you as the target. That, Harry, would be most extremely unwise. I am the primary piece opposing Lucius on the game board. For you to do such a thing would strengthen him greatly, and I did not think that that was your chosen side. This man's bullying makes you vulnerable. I am not the only one who could start a newspaper campaign against you. This is insane. Why are you doing this? I am sorry, Harry. It has to do with things that you are not, at this time, ready to hear. The boy stared at Dumbledore. Then he turned to look at Severus. Then back to Dumbledore again. It is insanity. You haven't reined him in because you think he's part of the pattern. That Hogwarts needs an evil potions master to be a proper magical school, just as it needs a ghost to teach history. That does sound like the sort of thing I would do, doesn't it? Unacceptable. I will not tolerate bullying or abuse. 
I had considered many possible ways of dealing with this problem, but I will make it simple. Either this man goes, or I do. Expulsion, Mr. Potter, is the final threat which may be used against a student. It is not customarily used as a threat by students against their headmaster. This is the best magical school in the entire world, and an education here is not an opportunity given to everyone. You forget that you're not the only one who can see patterns. This grows private. Now send him... Harry flicked a hand at Severus again, then stopped in mid-sentence and mid-gesture. Mr. Potter, once again, Severus Snape has my fullest confidence. You told him that the Dark Lord is alive. You utter fool. Harry, what are you talking about? I'm sorry, Albus. Severus and Dumbledore turned to look at her. Professor McGonagall didn't tell me. I guessed. I told you, I can see the patterns too. I guessed, and she controlled her reaction, but her control fell a shade short of perfection, and I could tell it was control, not genuine. And I told him that you and I and Severus were the only ones who knew. Which she did as a concession to prevent me from simply going around asking questions, as I threatened to do if she didn't talk. Threat's still on the table, and I do expect to be briefed fully at some point. And you threaten to abandon us to Voldemort if we do not comply with your wishes. I regret to inform you that you are not the center of the universe. I am not threatening to walk out on Magical Britain. I'm threatening to walk out on you. I am not a meek little Frodo. This is my quest, and if you want in, you will play by my rules. So, Mr. Potter, if Professor Snape is to leave you alone henceforth, will that be the last time this issue arises? Leave me alone? I am not his only victim, and certainly not the most vulnerable. Have you forgotten how defenseless children are? Henceforth, Severus will treat every student of Hogwarts with appropriate and professional courtesy, or you will find another potions master, or you will find another hero. This is not a request. This is your punishment. And if that seems impolite to you, it seemed no less impolite when you said it to me. You would not say such a thing to anyone you considered a real human being instead of a subordinate child, and I will treat you with just the same courtesy as you treat me. Oh, indeed, in very deed. This is my punishment if ever there was one. Of course you're in here blackmailing me to save your fellow students, not to save yourself. I can't imagine why I would have thought otherwise. Pardon me. I'm sorry for the interruption. Please, continue with the blackmail. Ah, uh, he's also to stop reading students' minds. Minerva, you. Sorting Hat warned me. Can't say anything else. Anyway, I think that's it. I'm done. Silence. Well, he certainly seems to have backed us into a corner. But Hogwarts does need an evil potions master. Or it just wouldn't be a proper magical school, now would it? So let us compromise. Severus will continue to unfairly award points to Slytherin and impose lax discipline on his house. And he will be awful to non-Slytherin students in their fifth year and higher. To others, he will be scary but not abusive. He will promise to only read minds when the safety of the student requires it. Hogwarts will have its evil potions master, and the most vulnerable victims, as you put it, will be safe. I suppose that is acceptable. You can't be serious. I am very much in favor of this. But what could we possibly tell the students? They might not have questioned this while Severus was being awful to everyone, but... Harry can tell the other students that he discovered a terrible secret of Severus's and did a bit of blackmail. It's true, after all. He discovered that Severus was reading minds, and he certainly did blackmail us. This is insanity. Ah, uh, and if anyone asks me why fifth years and above got shafted, I wouldn't blame them for being irate, and that part wasn't exactly my idea. Tell them that it wasn't you who suggested the compromise, that it was all you could get, and then refuse to say anything more. That too is true. There's an art to it. You'll pick it up with practice. 
And Mr. Potter must publicly apologize for his actions of today. The discipline of the school has been gravely injured by your actions, Mr. Potter. It must be restored. I think, Professor McGonagall, that you considerably overestimate the importance of what you call school discipline. Maintaining the current status hierarchy and enforcing its rules seems ever so much more wise and moral and important when you are on the top and doing the enforcing than when you are on the bottom. And I can cite studies to this effect if required. Mr. Potter, you underestimate the importance of discipline because you are not in need of it yourself. Not every child can learn in the absence of authority, and it is the other children who will be hurt, Mr. Potter, if they see your example as one to be followed. The first and last resort is the truth. The truth is that I shouldn't have gotten angry. I shouldn't have disrupted the class. I shouldn't have done what I did, and I set a bad example for everyone. The truth is also that Severus Snape behaved in a fashion unbecoming a Hogwarts professor, and that from now on he will be more mindful of the injured feelings of students in their fourth year and under. The two of us could both get up and speak the truth. I could live with that. In your dreams, Potter. After all, if the students see that the rules are for everyone, for professors too, not just for poor helpless students who get nothing but suffering out of the system, why, the positive effects on school discipline should be tremendous. I shall talk over this matter with Severus, and no apology will be required from you unless he apologizes as well. And now I declare this matter concluded, at least until lunchtime. Although, Harry, I'm afraid that Minerva wishes to speak with you about an additional matter, and that is not the result of any pressure on my part. Minerva, if you would. Minerva rose from her chair and almost fell. There was too much adrenaline in her blood. Her heart was beating too fast. Fox, accompany her, please. The phoenix soared across the room like a smooth tongue of flame leaping out, and they left through the door. And Fox began to croon. It was tender and soft, like a fireplace would sound if it had melody, and it washed over Minerva's mind, easing, soothing, gentling what it touched. What is that? The song of the phoenix. It, too, heals. What am I to do, Fox? I couldn't have protected them if I hadn't been angry. Then there was a flash like a fire flaring up and going out, and Fox was gone. Are phoenixes people? I mean, are they smart enough to count as people? Could I talk with Fox if I knew how? Phoenixes are creatures of powerful magic. They are fire, light, healing, rebirth. But in the end, no. And they walked the rest of the way in silence. There is a matter of school discipline from which you are not exempt. There are some students who cannot be entrusted with time-turners, Mr. Potter. You are one of them. I am sorry. No! I need it! I won't be able to attend Hogwarts! I won't be able to sleep! You will be able to sleep. The Ministry has delivered the protective shell for your time-turner. I will enchant it to open only between the hours of 9 p.m. and midnight. Mr. Potter, you have taken to using the time-turner as your solution to everything. Often very foolishly so. You used it to get back a remember-all. You vanished from a closet in a fashion apparent to other students. There are students who cannot be entrusted with time-turners because they become addicted to them. And so we must take them back. I suspect that if I asked your classmates, I would find that you were struggling to stay up long enough to go to sleep at a reasonable time, and waking up earlier and earlier every morning. Correct? Harry's face said everything she needed to know. But I need it! What if there are some Slytherins threatening me and I have to escape? Every other student in this castle runs the same risk, and I assure you that they survive. No student has died in this castle for 50 years. Mr. Potter, you will hand over your time-turner and do so now. It was too much. It was just all too much. His dark side had done things that seemed in retrospect insane. His dark side had won an impossible victory that might have been real and might have been a pure whim of a crazy headmaster. He just couldn't handle it anymore. He needed Fox to sing to him again. He needed to use the time-turner and go off and take a quiet hour to recover, but that wasn't an option anymore, and the loss was like a hole in his existence. If I may have your attention, please. Harry Potter has something he would like to share with us. Harry took a deep breath and got up. 
He walked over to the head table with every eye staring at him. Harry turned and looked out at the four tables. It was becoming harder and harder not to smile, but Harry kept his face expressionless as he spoke his brief and memorized speech. The truth is sacred. One of my most trusted possessions is a button which reads, Speak the truth, even if your voice trembles. This, then, is the truth. Remember that. I'm not saying it because I am being forced to say it. I'm saying it because it is true. What I did in Professor Snape's class was foolish, stupid, childish, and an inexcusable violation of the rules of Hogwarts. I disrupted the classroom and deprived my fellow students of their irreplaceable learning time, all because I failed to control my temper. I hope that not a single one of you will ever follow my example. I certainly intend to try never to follow it again. Many of the students gazing at Harry now had solemn, unhappy looks upon their faces, such as one might see at a ceremony marking the loss of a fallen champion. Until Harry raised his hand, and softly snapped his fingers, a gesture that was seen more than heard. It was possible that most of the head table wouldn't see it at all. Thank you, Mr. Potter. And now Professor Snape has something to share with us as well. Severus smoothly stood up from his place at the head table. It has been brought to my attention that my own actions played a part in provoking the admittedly inexcusable anger of Mr. Potter, and in the ensuing discussion I realized that I had forgotten how easily injured are the feelings of the young and immature. The potions classroom is a dangerous place, and I still feel that strict discipline is necessary. But henceforth, I will be more aware of the emotional fragility of students in their fourth year and younger. My deduction of points from Ravenclaw still stands, but I will revoke Mr. Potter's detention. Thank you. Some students were weeping openly. So was Professor Sprout. The Slytherins looked on with glares. I think we may be out of our league here, George. And from that day onward, no matter what Hermione tried to tell anyone, it would be an accepted legend of Hogwarts that Harry Potter could make absolutely anything happen by snapping his fingers. Yeah.